All right, we're going to get away from if functions for a bit. Let's take a break from all those logic functions or Boolean functions, as they sometimes call it, if you ever want to sound fancy. And we're going to look at something a little bit more simpler. Let's look at rounding functions. So rounding functions are things like, if I had the number 1.6, I want to round it to the nearest decimal place, then it would be the answer would be 2. Or if I had 1.2, I want to round it to 1. So there's two formulas we're going to look at today. The first one is um, the rounding function, and the second one is the integer function. So let's begin with the rounding. And we're going to look at our data set first. Let's go view data. Sometimes I think I say data, and then I, sometimes I think I say data. Eh, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. It might just be time of the day or something. And the column we're going to be using is sales per customer. And I accidentally clicked that. Right? And the things we're going to look at is if it's 388.92, I want to round it to the nearest number, so 389, because if it's greater than 0.5, we're rounding up to the next whole number. 50.94 is going to become 51, that's going to become 307, that's going to become 122, that's going to become 414, and so on. Let's go ahead and do it. Got a drawing tool. Let's go and create a calculated field. Right? We're going to call this round, and we're going to round up. And instead of doing that one, actually, we'll do this. In case you ever need to find a formula and you're not sure what it was, you're like, I think it was round, but I don't know how to use it. You can just type round in here, and it'll give you a little bit of a description. And the way you read this, and if you ever start doing programming, you start looking at like Stack Overflow, those things on online of forums and all that, you'll see a lot of the formulas are kind of described this way, meaning this is the formula, and these are the inputs. Okay, and it's usually separated by the comma. So that's the first input, that's the second input. And if it's ever got square brackets, I believe that means it's optional, right? Meaning if you leave it out, there's a default of whatever it may be for that formula. So neat little need to know, fun fact for the day. So we go around, we can double click that. As you can see, it's got the hint in there. And we're going to bring in that sales per customer. Okay, and we're going to round it to the near to zero decimal places. Okay, I'm going to go OK, and you can see the round function in there. And let's go ahead and look at that data. Oops, no, I don't want to make it too big. Let's go round, 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 get on around. Okay, we have this column here and this column here, which again I pressed. So let's have a look. So here we got 389.92, and it's rounded it up to 389. This one is 35.19. Less than 0.5, mean, meaning it's going to drop it down by, or it's going to drop it down to 35, right? Then we got 122, right? 122, 414, from 413.82, right? So this is rounding it up based on that 0.5 rule. We can also round up to the next decimal place, right? So let's do another formula. Let's go create calculated field. Let's go around to. And we're not going to use that. We're going to go around sales per customer. And we're going to go to the nearest first, uh, the first decimal place. Let's go OK. All right. Let's go. Let, maybe we should call that round. Round one fight. OK. Come in here. And let's look at round one. And as you can see, it's now rounded up to the next decimal place. Meaning what it's doing, for example, in this one, right? It's looking at the next decimal place, so it's 0.05. So it's looking at this 2. If that is less than 0.05, we'll then drop it back down, so it's now 0 0.9. 0 0.19, so the 9 is greater than 5, then round that, that first digit up to 2. So this is why this is now 0 0.20. Okay, so that's what the rounding does. Let's say I wanted to force rounding up or down. Okay, meaning if it's 35.0, Two, I still want it to be 36, meaning it's going to automatically round up, right? Or no matter what the decimal place is, I want you to round down. This is where the integer function comes in. Let's do another formula. Let's do sales per customer, calculated field. And we're going to go int, right? And what that does is it only grabs the whole value, okay? Let's go OK to view our data. Let's look for that int. All right, where is int? Which is over here. Okay, and this is our sales per customer. And you'll see that no matter what it says in the decimal placing, it will always say, 
it will always look at the whole number. Okay, so 3,979, uh, 3,979, let's pick something that's higher. So we've got this one, right, which is 50.94, which is if we use the rounding function, it will round it up to 51, whereas here in integer, it's converted down to zero. This will autom automatically round to the, to the integer of the value. And if you're not sure what integer means, it just means whole number, meaning you can't have decimal places. Okay, so if you want to round up, you can probably guess how we're going to do that. It's a neat little trick. If I again go into sales per customer, we're going to use that integer, right? So let's just say integer round up, let's call it. We're going to go int. And to round it up to the next number, it's just plus one. Okay? And that's it. That's how you do it. The only thing I can think of where this may be an issue is if the number is a flat 55. Right, as in 55.00000. So that may not work, right? In that case, you probably have to play around with the rounding function of minusing. But I think it will depend on the data set that you have. I personally haven't had to use this. If you do and you want to see a bit more, let me know and I'll see if I can come up with a very specific solution for you. Otherwise, that's how I would do it. And that's all we have for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next one.